Hello everyone, this is your guy Rajat from rainstudios.com. So in this video, we are going to learn about databases because if you want to create an application of any kind, you would require databases to store the data. So let's get started. So before talking about the databases, we first need to understand the situation where a database is actually necessary for the application. Now let's consider a case study. Sally wants to create an app where she will send birthday notifications to her users via personalized digital birthday cards like this one, right? So how would she store her users information or where would she store it? So that is the question. And that is our problem statement. Enter the databases. Databases solves the exact problem Sally has. Sally can use a database to store all of her users information in a centralized repository so that she or her application can access the data anytime she wants and in a organized way. So, Let's have a look at the formal definition of what databases are. So a database is an organized collection of data. Sorry, I have got a typo here. It's off and you can check out the slides and it would be corrected in those slides. Okay. And the data is structured in some sort of tables or schemas or document. It depends and it varies from database to database. Okay. Now Sally can design something like this where a table can store all of the information related to her application users like she can store the name, the age of the user and the date of birth which would be required to calculate the notifications to be sent to the users on their birthdays, right? So Sally can store the data in a tabular form and this is one such representation of storing a data into a database. Now as I've told you that the schema representation or the representation of data into the databases can be different and it can range from tables to documents to something else like JSON etc. Right? So based on that schema representation or the schema storage, we have two prominent types of databases in the market. Those types are relational and non-relational. Relational databases store data in tables and the tables are connected with some sort of logical relationship. That is why these type of databases are known as RDBMS or the Relational Database Management System. On the other hand, non-relation databases store data in mostly key value pairs like as we have seen in the previous slide, this data can be stored as key value pair like the name can be the key and the value can be Rajat. In the next case, the name can be age or I mean the key can be age and the value is 29 and so on. Okay. So non-relational databases store data in key value pair most of the time but the representation can be different and it depends on the database you are using. Now relational databases include MySQL or MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server and there are several other databases which are RDMS databases in nature. For non-relational databases we have Databases like MongoDB, Couchbase, and Redis, but there are several other non-relational databases which allow you to store your data in no particular fashion or in key value pairs. Okay. Now let's have a look at the practical implementation of how a data can actually be stored in a relational database or in a non-relational database. Okay. So let's start with a relational database case study. Let's suppose we want to store our employees data. So we can create a schema 
like we can create one table named employee and we can store data like employees id employees name and employees age and this table contains basic data about the employee but later on there comes a requirement where we also want to store the address of our employee so we can create yet another table employee underscore address and we can create some sort of relationship between these two tables here we have a similar column id which actually points to the value stored in this employee table and where the value actually matches represent the entry for the same employee okay so id of 0013 in this table actually stores additional data for whatever that is stored in employee table now you need to understand that this is not a programmatic representation or the storage system this is a logical representation and you have to create that kind of relationship between the tables using the mechanism provided by the database okay so most probably this is a foreign key primary key relationship you can go on to the internet and search for foreign keys and primary keys in order to gain better insights about how to create relationship between two tables in any rdbms systems okay so if we want to get the address of rajat we are going to apply a join because these tables are connected using some sort of similar entity in our case it is id so we are going to apply a join which is yet another rdbms term to find out the relationship or the relational data pertaining to any entry okay so if we want to find the address of rajat we are we first going to find out the id which is the primary key and then we are going to go to this table and we are going to find that same id in this table and we are going to take the address from this table and we are going to return it to the user because that address actually corresponds to rajat so that is how relational databases operate okay now let's move on to relational database now as i have told you that mostly non relational databases store the data in key value pair so let's suppose this is an entry of a particular chat and the chat messages are stored in this fashion okay so here key is chat id and its value is this one and it contains an array as denoted by these square brackets and this message array itself contains several other key value pairs okay so this is one entry this is another entry so this is one message this is another message and all of the data of that particular message is contained in this record right so this is message 1 and message 2 and as you can see that message also contains the user id so we can uniquely identify who sent what message okay so non relational databases can easily store all of the data in one place let's suppose we are going to design a relational database schema for this thing so we are going to create one table for all of the messages and other table for all of the users who participated in that chat instead of designing two tables we have created a single document which stores everything in one document and in one read we are going to take out all of the data so we have to read less data and in databases reading and writing are the two things which you need to care about because it is all about accessing and storing the data so most probably reading and writing is something you should be concerned about as far as databases are concerned so in this kind of thing instead of applying so many joins 
we have retrieved every single chat message of that chat between two users in one read right so non relational databases are based on that ideology and that is how they operate okay now you must be wondering that if you want to design an application which database or which kind of database would you use now it totally depends on the type of application you want to create so if you are creating some sort of chat application maybe a relational database won't be a proper fit for your use case because in that particular case you would be applying too many joins or you would be applying too many logical operation to get all of data so that you can return the data to the user or to the app if you are going to employ non relational database to store data of some employee right and you are going to create two or three documents to store or to fragment the data over several documents in that case you are going to read or access two three documents to get all of the data out right so in that particular case maybe an rdms would be a better choice because joins are crazy fast in rdms systems and document access is crazy fast in non relational database systems right so it all depends on the use case or the type of application you want to create you can head over to stack overflow as well and there are many questions regarding the same topic maybe you can go out and look for yourself that before designing an application it is better to consult the internet like what kind of database would be a better choice for this sort of application and as the time goes by and as you have created some application you will get proper insights into what kind of database you can use okay so this is one thing you should clearly remember right databases are everything if your application is based on users data right databases are the central place which is providing every interface of your application the required data right so or it is a repository which should be backed up properly because once the database is down your application or the ui of your application is of no use because it cannot show any relevant data to the users right so considering that fact you need to implement proper strategies much before implementing or deploying the system in production so that you can be sure that whatever the data your users are creating on your applications will be persisted and will be backed up properly so that in case anything goes down in case the disk crashes in case of any natural calamity you won't be able to access the primary database you have the backup which you can use to restore the database in all its glory so that your users won't lose their data and you don't lose your business so make sure to back up your databases because it's a critical thing to do and with that i'm signing off i hope that you must have got some proper insights about what databases are what kind of problems databases solve and what kind of prominent databases are there in the market and which one you should employ and if you are dicey about the situation where you should go out and consult and ask right so with that i'm signing off and make sure to subscribe to this channel because i produce weekly videos related to computer and computer science education thank you all for your time take care bye bye